Hi fans and welcome to this WPIAL playoff week one edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Last Friday night, Woodland Hills wrapped up the regular season with a sloppy 19-7 victory over the Penn Hills Indians. This week, the Wolverines have earned the number four seed in the WPIAL playoffs and will host the 13th seeded Pine Richland Rams at the Wolverina. We're going to sit down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak to review last week's victory over Penn Hills, preview this week's game against Pine Richland, and we'll also let you see highlights of last Friday night's game. All of that and more on the pregame show right here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. And off this time, Miles Sanders getting his first start after being injured, and he'll bounce it to the far sideline inside of the 20. 15, 10, 5, end zone, touchdown, Woodland Hills. Slip screen to the far sideline. Art Tompkins will catch it from Harry Randall, and Tompkins will be brought down. Off of play action, it'll be Harry Randall stepping forward, close to the first down marker. Wins to either side, Randall's gonna keep it. He'll have the first down following a blocker, and into the end zone goes Harry Randall. Woodland Hills looks to answer as Trevon Mathis on the kick return. Will carry it all the way to the 24-yard line. Enough will go to Joel Shaw. Shaw into open greenery will be brought down at the 20-yard line. And it will be Mathis on the keeper, and he will be brought down in the backfield. Randall, straight drop back. He'll now step up into the pocket, running to the far side. He should have the first down and more. 40, 35, still on his feet, 30, and he will be brought down at the 29-yard line. Good snap. Randall stepping to his left, throwing to his left. The pass will be completed to Trayvon Mathis, who's still on his feet and brought down at the 15-yard line. Randall straight drop back, now rolls to his left as he's pressured, steps up into the pocket. He could have a touchdown here inside of the 10, inside of the 5, and into the end zone for a Woodland Hills touchdown, Harry Houdini. Indians with a banana bunch formation to the near sideline, and the Indians will air it out, and Trevon Mathis will intercept it at the 17-yard line. Trevon Mathis down the near sideline, brought down at the 32-yard line. Rolling to his left is quarterback Billy Kistner, and Kistner will be wrapped, and he will be sacked by Akira McLean. Randall, timing pattern, near side, complete. Trayvon Mathis, first down yardage and more. Art Tompkins bouncing it to the outside, squeaking his way forward, and he'll be brought down at the 31-yard line. First down and 10 at their own 25. Dejon Brown making a stop in the backfield. Motion man, Chris David from left to right. David takes the handoff to the far boundary. He'll be off to the races. 40, cutting it back, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, and he will be tracked down from behind inside of the 30. Kistner hit as he releases the football, and it will be knocked away. Retreating, leaping, and swatting is Jihad Brown. Randall will hand off Joel Shaw. Rumbling forward, brought down after a gain of seven. Kistner curling away from play action. He'll be hit, he'll be brought down. White jerseys everywhere. Mathis in, sacked by Dante Bratis. Bratis on a delayed blitz. Two receivers, right empty set. Mathis down the near sideline, airing it out, and it will be intercepted by Chris David. Handoff, Tompkins. Bounds it to the near side. Here comes Art Tompkins. First down yardage and more. Randall hands off. Tompkins, big hole up the middle. Randall's going to keep it himself this time. Driving his way forward. There goes Harry Randall all the way to the 50-yard line. Again, your final score, Woodland Hills defeats Penn Hills 19-7. Well, kicking off next week, Woodland Hills will take on a team to be determined, and it should be a great opportunity for Woodland Hills to head back to Heinz Field for the 10th time in program history. Hi again, fans, and welcome back to this WPIAL Playoff Week 1 edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Adam Guskey here sitting down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak. And Coach Novak, before we talk about 
this week's game against Pine Richland. Let's take a look back to last week's victory over Penn Hills. Far from a clean game, but you got the victory. Clinched the number two seed in the Southeastern Conference and ended up with the number four seed in the playoffs. Yeah, um, it, was, it was a big game for both teams. You know, Penn Hills has a very good football team and well coached. Uh, kids played very well. They're, they run a great offensive scheme and it's tough to defend them. And defensively, they sent the house every play just about. And, uh, you know, our guys were able to pick it up and you know, we were able to maintain some drives and put some points on the board. But uh, it was a battle, you know, from the beginning to the end. It was a battle. It was a physical game. Uh, you know, Penn Hills is our rival across the road. Uh, it's a friendly rivalry. Uh, like I said last week, it was it was going to be a football game, and it was. They, they were playing hard to win because they could have came in a, at a higher seat if they won, and we'd have been a lower seat. But uh, we we're fortunate to come up with the win and get into the playoffs. With, you know, with a number four seat. Coach, one thing that was very evident was that your team hadn't seen speed like that since the McKeesport game. Yeah, definitely they have a lot of speed as we do, and uh, you know they kind of counteracted each other. I don't think they've seen a lot of speed like we have either, so it's kind of going back and forth, and uh, definitely played a part in it. You know, uh, of course, Miles' first carry, Miles Sanders, he took it 40 yards for a touchdown, so that was a big play for us. Uh, unfortunately, he got hurt midway through the second quarter. How is Miles Sanders? He twisted his other ankle. That he twisted one a couple weeks ago. He took a couple weeks off and came back and played. And, uh, he was trying to get extra yard and spin out, and he twisted it the wrong way. And, uh, he won't play this week against uh, Pine Richland. Hopefully we get to the next round and take it week by week. Obviously you have a great player sitting behind him, though, in Art Tompkins. Art stepped in. You know, he's played a lot of defense. He doesn't have the offensive reps that Miles has and the experience on offense. And uh, he was mainly playing the slot position on offense where he's done a great job. So, you know, we're going to utilize him at the running back spot and the slot spot this week. Well, Coach, without Miles Sanders, of course, Art Tompkins steps in well, but Harry Randall carries the ball a lot more when Miles Sanders is in, in the lineup as well. Yeah, we got to try to utilize all our skilled guys. You know, Harry's an outstanding runner. He's been throwing the ball really well. Uh, he threw some deep balls that were close to being big plays for us. Uh, and they made some good defensive plays, and uh, we didn't come up with the ball a couple of times. But, uh, you know, he's got to carry the ball and then throw the ball. And we got uh, big Joe L. Shaw, he's got to carry the ball and pound it inside. And we got Chris David coming around on the slot to jet play and catching some balls. And we got uh, Trayvon Mathis and Dante uh, Rodas, they all got to catch the ball and, you know, working some of the other guys. But, uh, you know, we got to spread it out and use all our players. You talked about Penn Hills making some big defensive plays. Your secondary did as well. Jihad Brown with a huge uh, breakup in the end zone. We also saw an interception from Trevon Mathis and some other big plays by your secondary. Yeah, I thought the secondary played very well against a very hard team to defense. And uh, Jihad made the play, the play of the game. I think, you know, if you look at us, the secondary has gotten a lot better as we've gone through here. Uh, Jihad's gotten a lot better from the beginning of the season till now. You know, he plays a lot for the varsity and has done a great job. I think uh, this will be our biggest test in the secondary play against Pine Wrestling this week. Let's stay with the defense for just a minute. You know, Dijon Brown doesn't make a lot of sp splash plays, but what he does is he finds the football, and he seems to always be around loose balls. He must lead the team in fumble recovery. Yeah, Dejon just, you know, last year he did the same thing. He had some fumbles and interceptions, and, you know, this year he's carrying on the same thing. And, you know, all the linebackers are playing really well. Uh, they shot Osbrooks. Day -Day, he's, he's had a great year. He's our lead tackler, and he just had a phenomenal year. And, you know, we use him all on the blitz, and he gets to the quarterback and stops a lot of run plays. And Dante brought us, was the first game back, and he got back into the swing of things. So, yeah, all the linebackers and Dejon Brown and uh, Jordan Lee plays linebacker. And, you know, they're all playing very well. Last question about the defense. How's James Eggleston's ankle? Day-to-day. Uh, -day. Uh, very doubtful for this week, but, uh, you know, hopefully we get him back for the next week. It's, you know, it's a big blow on that interior defensive line. So, you know, Kevin Solomon, who played a lot this year in the rotation, he, you know, he's ready to step in. And our other two tackles, uh, Wolford Clark and Dana Gibson, will have to play more uh, on both sides of the ball. So 
you know, uh, it hurts us losing, you know, him just like it hurts us losing Miles. But, you know, it's part of being in the playoffs in the long season. Guys are going to get banged up. you got to have guys stepping in. Defense is going to have to play strong because Pine Richland has a very potent offense. Very wide open. Uh, Coach Chris Bear was the last time he was down here. They beat us. And they had a, a great uh, game plan offensively, so we're going to have to be prepared. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll be doing a lot of tricky things down there, trying to, you know, they threw a lot of screens, bubble screens, double passes. They got, you know, wide open offense. we got to be ready for it. Let's talk a little bit about Eric Kasparovich, a name from the past, quarterback back in 1993 on a great North Hills team. He was a great player. Uh, he went to the University of Pittsburgh, had a great career there. You know, now he's teaching. He coached at North Hills for a number of years. A couple of years ago, he went up to uh, Pine Richland, and now he's the head coach up there. Doing a very, very good job with the guys. How's the Rams' defense? Uh, very solid. A very solid defense. Uh, opportunistic, I'd say. They, again, they're, they're setting a lot of people, uh, you know, trying to squeeze the ball on us. And, uh, you know, we're going to have pickup stunts. You know, when we did, uh, like, the first play against Penn Hills, Miles took it to the house because, uh, you know, Joel Shaw made a great block on their outside linebacker on the stunt. And a couple of times when we didn't, like, the play got hurt on, we would pick up the stunt. And he got tracked in the backfield and tried to make a spin and it didn't work out. Coach, we're all surprised with the fact that you got the four seed with two losses and Seneca Valley with just one loss got the five? Yeah, I, you know, looking at the brackets, I thought it would have been a five seed. Uh, could have been four or five, I think. Strength of schedule, the two teams you lost to, they weren't big losses. You know, Sinclair game there, number one, we lost 16-10. So I think a lot of people uh, thought we might get the fourth seed. It could have went either way. I think strength of program and you know Seneca's program has been coming on strong. They they have a very very good football team too. So uh, you know you get in the playoffs. I I think the WPR has at least Quad A is the the strongest has been top to bottom. There's a lot of good football teams playing against some of the seeded teams, some of the top eight teams. Everybody, you know, one, two, three. They're not they're not playing bad teams. And four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're playing competitive teams that, you know, you make enough mistakes, you're going to lose a football game. Seems like the WPIAL gave Woodland Hills a ton of respect as well. It seems like the victory over Woodland Hills is what gave Upper St. Clair the number one seed. Obviously, McKeesport got the victory over Woodland Hills. That was what helped them get that number three seed. So a lot is based on you, and you mentioned program history. How much of that do you think takes place? Well, when you say the last three years we made it to Hines, so... Uh, I think that shows a lot for the program, but in the history of the program, we've made it there a number of times and uh, made it to the semifinals. I don't know how many times, you know, more than half of the years we've been in existence. So you make it to the semifinals in that top four in the WPL, and you're one of the top teams in the state and one of the top teams in the country. Talk about the program history. 25 out of 27 seasons you've been in the playoffs. You now have an opportunity to go back to your 10th WPIAL championship game since 1996 and win your sixth WPIAL championship. We don't even think about those things. Out, you know, we take them one week at a time, one game at a time. All we're focused on is Pine Ridge because they got a very good team. You know, our kids got to prepare for that. You know, we, we never talk much about winning the conference or playoffs, just one game at a time and work hard at practice and things will take care of themselves. Coach Novak, thanks a lot for your time. Good luck this week against the Rams, and we hope to talk to you again next week from the WPIAL quarterfinals. Thanks, Adam. We'll be right back with more of the pregame show right after this on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Fans, we again thank you for joining us for this WPIAL Playoff Week 1 edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. If you can't make it to the Wolverine this Friday night, you can tune in on our flagship radio station, AM 1550 WZUM. We'll have our live radio broadcast on our website at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com. Our radio broadcast is also available on the MSA Sports Network at msasports.net. 
You can tune in to our live cable radio broadcast on Monroeville Comcast Cable Channel 13, Penn Hills Comcast Cable Channel 98, and Verizon Fios Channel 37. And make sure you tune in to all of our television affiliates or our YouTube channel next week for highlights of this Friday's game. For everybody at the Woodland Hills Football Network, I'm Adam Gusky. We we'll hope to talk to you again next week from the Whippeal quarterfinals. This has been a presentation of the Woodland Hills Football Network. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, visit us at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com.